Hey there, welcome to VoiceFlow. My name is Daniel, and in this video, we're gonna walk through making a free account on VoiceFlow and then give you an overview of the platform so you can get started in building your first AI agent. So we're gonna go to voiceflow.com and we're gonna click the Get Started button. Now, making an account on VoiceFlow is free and does not require a credit card. So once you're in the signup page, you can go ahead and add your first name, last name, email, and that'll send you a verification email that you can use to create an account. Once you've verified your email, you'll be taken to the onboarding screen. So we're going to select customer support, which is our main use case, or one of the other ones. Our team size is small, and I am working with developers, and I heard about us through YouTube. Now, VoiceFlow is most powerful when you are working with a developer, as it lets you take advantage of all of the APIs and developer tools that we have to connect to your internal stack. We're going to call our workspace VoiceFlow and just add a quick image here. Great. When you sign up to VoiceFlow, you get dropped into a sample project. So this lets you see how you can actually build and come back to it as a reference as you create your own AI agent. So you can see here, it starts off with a quick overview of the tool on the left-hand side where all of the steps are, but we'll go over these in a minute. Now, VoiceFlow is composed of a couple parts. The first one is the canvas. This is where you're gonna actually drag and drop out the steps to create your AI flow. You can see here that my agent has a couple of different workflows, a simple workflow and a complex workflow. You can think about workflows like different tasks or different flows that your agent can accomplish. So that might be a talk to sales flow, that might be a get support flow. Uh, any specific action that you want your assistant to take can become a workflow. In a simple workflow, we're doing something pretty straightforward. We're presenting a message to the user, we're giving them some buttons, we're capturing a question, and then we're answering it based on the information that our assistant has in the knowledge base. In the complex workflow, we're doing something a little bit more advanced. We're capturing the user's email, we're capturing their question, we're checking if the question is a certain length, and then we're using something called a function, which is a way to build integrations in VoiceFlow, to send a ticket to Zendesk. Now, we'll go over this in a separate video, but this is a, one of our developer tools that allow you to write JavaScript and make API calls to receive and send data from and to different tools. Now, outside of these flows and workflows, if I hit the back button, I'm gonna be taking to the content management system. Now this is where all of the content in your AI agent lives. So you can see here that you've got the workflow. So as you add on more workflows or more actions or tasks that your assistant can accomplish, you'll little appear here. We have the knowledge base, which is the brain of your assistant. Components, so these are like reusable pieces or reusable sets of blocks that you wanna be able to reuse. Variables, functions, which we just talked about. So you can see the create Zendesk one here, and tents and entities. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into the knowledge base. Now you can think about the knowledge base like the brain of your assistant. This is actually where you wanna start when you create a new one. We're gonna go ahead and add in some data sources that are gonna be used to power the assistant's conversation. Now, this is a support bot, so I wanna import all of our help documentation for VoiceFlow. There's a couple different ways that I can do that. I can do plain text where I actually just copy and paste the text in. I can upload files, I can add URLs, I can use it to scrape my website, or I can use an integration with something like Zendesk. Now, this is the most accurate one because it pulls the information directly from Zendesk's API. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. So I select Zendesk. I'm gonna put in my company URL. And hit connect. Now, I've already authorized, but this will take you through an authentication flow and then bring you back into the tool. So here I can go ahead and select which brand in Zendesk I wanna pull the information from. And you can see right here, we've got 109 different data sources. Now, if you've got a huge Zendesk, no problem. You can filter down to the ones you want, but let's go ahead and set refresh on a weekly basis and import all 109 documents. Now you'll see that all 109 documents get imported into VoiceFlow and stored in VoiceFlow's vector database. So a vector database is a store for information that's specific to this AI agent. It's what's gonna allow the AI agent to use AI and actually answer users' questions. So you can see here that all the documents have uploaded successfully. Now let's test it out and ask something like, what are the different steps in VoiceFlow? Now what my AI agent does is it sends that question to the knowledge base, retrieves all the relevant information, and then uses AI to summarize an answer. And you can see here in the settings, I'm using GPT 3.5, but I can go ahead and select a bunch of different models. I can choose to modify the system prompt, the instructions to get different types of answers. This looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and now go back to our workflow. So in our workflow, you can see here that one of the steps I'm using is an AI step. So this is taking the question that I asked and it's sending it back to the knowledge base using GPT 3.5 Turbo to answer the question. 
So let's go ahead and give this a quick prototype to see what it looks like. So to prototype, I can hit the Run button here, or I can start from a specific block. So let's just hit Run and hit Run Test. So you can see it provided me a message. It's giving me some buttons. I'm going to say Ask GPT a question. And now I'm going to ask the same question of what are the different steps in voice flow? So you can see that it's going to send that to the knowledge base, and it's going to actually go ahead and answer that question. So you can see some of the background information here about what model, how many tokens were used, as well as the answer. So that's a quick overview of voice flow. In the next video, we're going to walk through building your first AI agent from scratch and actually start using some of those steps in the step menu that I showed you earlier to make that happen.